we are live. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being uh, with us uh, in another webinar of the Learning from the Extremes project. Uh, today, we're going to discuss uh, uh, ChatGPT, uh, Conversation Artificial Intelligence for Education. Uh, what is the role? Uh, what it, does it mean uh, for the students and the teachers? Uh, fortunately, we have two experts on the issue, and I will not uh, speak, but sit back and listen. Uh, I'm very happy and honored to introduce Dr. Vasilis Katsouros, Director of the Institute of for Language and Speech Processing in Athena Research Center, and Dr. Pepi Stamouli, Research Associate in the Institute for Language and Speech Processing in the Athena Research Center, uh, who will uh, highlight the issue and um, introduce us uh, to current applications of AI, which can serve teaching and learning uh, objectives. Uh, without further ado, uh, Dr. Katsouros, Dr. Stamouli, the, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation, Nikos, Gustavo, and Rosa. Um, um, I will start the presentation, uh, today's presentation. Uh, let me share uh, the slides. Um, uh, you must see the slides on the screen. So, um, uh, as Nikos uh, said, we will be uh, discussing today a very hot topic and very uh, popular topic on conversational uh, artificial intelligence for education um, and how ChatGPT uh, has changed uh, or will will affect uh, the work uh, uh, of students and teachers. Um, uh, we, uh, I'm Vasilis Katsouros. And uh, together with my colleague uh, Pepe, uh, we'll uh, uh, we'll do the presentation. So I'll give uh, the floor to Pepe um, to say a, a few things about the objectives of the webinar. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, uh, all of you, and the Learning for Me Extremes project for hosting us in this uh, very interesting webinar. Um, let's start with the main objectives of this webinar. Uh, at first, I'm going to shortly present uh, to you our own project, the AI for a Do project. Uh, uh, most of its activities uh, are very relevant to uh, a artificial intelligence in education. Uh, we'll uh, continue with an, a brief introduction to artificial intelligence technologies and their uh, applications in uh, everyday life and in education. Uh, we'll get familiarized with uh, current applications, most of all with uh, ChatGPT, uh, but uh, focusing on uh, their capabilities to serve teaching and learning objectives um, in the context of education. Um, then uh, you will be invited to use an AI-powered educational assistant that we're going to present, uh, which is under development in uh, the context of the AI for Do project, uh, with the aim to understand uh, uh, how uh, AI um, uh, works, helps us, uh, or its limitations and conditions for safe and effective use. And uh, we hope that uh, uh, with your participation, we'll gather uh, some uh, uh, end users requirements for the development of uh, our final project outcome, which is a conversational AI system able to support students and teachers. Uh, so um, uh, uh, the project uh, we are uh, running is called AI for a Do conversational AI assistant for teaching and learning. It is an Erasmus Plus forward-looking project and it is coordinated by uh, Athena Research Center. Um, we have um, partners from uh, several European countries, uh, Ireland, Sweden, Greece, and uh, Cyprus. Um, the project um, uh, addresses some uh, uh, 
Next slide, please. Thanks, Vasilis. Uh, some uh, uh, facets of uh, AI and learning, the most important of which is learning with AI. So in this context, we are developing and we are planning to implement and evaluate uh, conversational educational assistance addressed to teachers and students powered by AI and speech and language technologies. Uh, more specifically, we are uh, aiming to develop a conversational assistant for students called the study buddy uh, with the aim to enhance learning and empower students in the context of self-study and everyday preparation for school. Uh, we, uh, moreover, we are developing an AI-powered application for teachers called the Teacher Workmate, aiming to support them in their teaching and assessment uh, activities. Um, Next slide. Um, another uh, uh, aspect of AI and learning that we are addressing is learning for human and AI collaboration. Uh, in this context, we aim to investigate the implications of the AI adoption in real educational uh, uh, settings in terms of uh, several uh, ethical uh, aspects to evaluate our applications uh, uh, impact on teaching and learning in terms of their usability, acceptance and learning outcomes. And uh, also to produce uh, evidence-based recommendations addressed to the educational community and to policymakers on the effective, ethical and uh, inclusive uh, deployment of AI in education. Uh, and finally, uh, we address the learning about AI aspect, uh, uh, in terms of which we are um, planning some short projects with students um, uh, where they are going to um, experiment on the core AI components of our applications to gain hands-on learning experiences of how they work. And this is also an opportunity to um, understand their, system, their, their uh, strengths, uh, limitations, and uh, possible biases. Uh, the impact that we uh, aspire to achieve, uh, as far as students are concerned, is to improve uh, their engagement in the learning pro process, to promote their autonomy and their motivation and personalization of learning, and also to improve learning outcomes since uh, we um, aspire to uh, have uh, some applications work for them as their tutors. Um, and uh, uh, as a long-term impact to promote the acceptance of AI systems uh, as learning assistants and uh, realize uh, the human role in their uh, development, use, and improvement. Uh, regarding teachers, uh, we uh, hope to provide them with effective tools to accomplish their everyday teaching and assessment duties and for more effective students monitoring. And uh, at the long term, to empower them to work in AI-rich educational settings in the future. Uh, and also to raise their awareness of the direct impact of uh, the human intelligence, of teachers' intelligence, to the AI's intelligence. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, as far as the educational community as a whole and uh, policymakers are concerned, uh, we hope we increase our knowledge uh, about the needs and perceptions of the educational community about AI to gain evidence-based understanding of uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, impact in learning and teaching, to support uh, the educational practices uh, for the effective AI integration in education, uh, to better prepare the educational community uh, for the future AI-rich uh, education, and to highlight the ethical implication and challenges 
of uh, the AI adoption. Um, so before we start talking about uh, AI, its applications in everyday life or in education, uh, you are invited to fill in a, a short questionnaire. It will take about 10 minutes maximum, uh, which uh, will help us investigate the level of teachers' awareness on the available AI technologies. Um, so uh, this is the link. So uh, if you can uh, please uh, post the link uh, to uh, our audience um, and we'll uh, allow, we'll give you um, approximately 10 minutes from now uh, to work on, on this questionnaire. Uh, it's not a long questionnaire. It's, it's not uh, it's a very short questionnaire, very straightforward to fill in. And it will give us uh, input on um, your uh, current awareness about uh, AI technologies. And, and just uh, a tip, uh, uh, there is a first question uh, which needs you to select an educational partner. So please choose ARC uh, referring to Athena Research Center. So we'll be back in 10 minutes, right? Yes, I keep uh, the time. Um, and uh, whoever has a question, uh, please uh, uh, type it in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the channel. So we'll take it uh, during uh, this uh, time. Okay, so while we are waiting for people to fill the form, I don't know if Rosa is available. Uh, maybe we can take advantage of this uh, short interval to say something about the future webinars. Um, Thank you, Gustavo. That yeah. is actually very important. Uh, the next uh, two uh, webinars are going to be one about uh, positive positification of, of distance learning education. And the next one will be um, a virtual visit to the biosphere in Arizona. We will feel what it is like to be um, in a settlement that is being prepared to, to host humans in the moon or on Mars or something similar. Uh, so both of them will take place in Zoom and not in YouTube, although I I think we can also uh, 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 show it live in YouTube, but uh, the idea is to allow participants to interact more closely uh, with the speakers. And uh, the one uh, on June 21st, uh, the visit to the biosphere will be one hour later than the usual time to accommodate the, the, the hour in Arizona, which is going to be very early for them. But all of this is going to be sent out to you um, in order to participate in both uh, webinars, you will need to register so that uh, you will have access to the Zoom link in case you want to participate live. For the one, the visit for the biosphere, you will be invited to bring your students along so that they can ask the scientists directly questions that they might have. All this information will fly into your emails if you register to receive more information from learning from the extreme webinars. And I will ask Gustavo to please post the link um, on the website, on the, on the YouTube channel, so people know that they have to register for the future ones. As usual, you will find information about them in the Learning from the Extremes uh, social media uh, channel and in, in our institution, the Nucleo, you will find information about both these uh, webinars. Thank you, Rosa. I will share the link uh, soon. Uh, are we supposed to 
as for this forum as well, Vasilis, Pepe, I was taking a look and I thought those are, I thought, I, I thought I'm not a school teacher. I use, for instance, chat GPT to, in some of the, the work that I do with students and, and teacher training. Oh, can I can I also be part of the the research? You muted, Vasily. Sorry. Yes, of course. Uh, um, teachers can be part of our research, and uh, we are welcoming. Uh, um, uh, possibly, we'll have an open call of uh, expression of interest for teachers that are willing uh, to test uh, the platform that we are developing. Uh, as we go along, the project will last for uh, the next uh, uh, 24 months. Uh, it has been started uh, in the beginning of uh, this year. And actually, we do like the interaction uh, with teachers and students. Uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, these are the real innovators. Um, of course, technology needs to be developed and improved. But I think the human factor is very important, uh, especially in this case, uh, because uh, uh, actually it will change the, uh, the educational practice. So we need to be innovative on how we uh, deploy technologies and uh, have creative teachers and inspired teachers um, uh, and students as well uh, to have uh, you know, innovative classrooms. So uh, from our side, we are very open. And uh, through your channel, your hosp hospital style, which uh, uh, we can uh, uh, be in, in touch with uh, whoever uh, like to participate. And um, now going back to ChatGPT, because we know ChatGPT is there. Um, so many, I think many teachers uh, have already tried ChatGPT. And depending on um, uh, the, uh, their background, on uh, their creativity, uh, they they have. Uh, I mean, I have seen some very interesting blog posts uh, on the internet about the usage of uh, ChatGPT. Excuse me. Can you repeat that? Very interested. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, uses of uh, ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I... in ChatGPT is very important because mm -hmm. it's, it's behind. Uh, um, I mean, the basis is a big language model, which means that uh, okay, uh, supposedly to uh, has uh, has been uh, uh, trained on a huge amount of of linguistic data of language textual data. Uh, so you can think of that uh, uh, it has encoded um, uh, what is uh, uh, the, in, the, in, in the human knowledge that is written in, uh, in the web, uh, on textbooks, authoritative textbooks, or other sources uh, that are electronic, electronically available. Uh, so uh, the interesting thing is that uh, how you can prompt, how you can uh, write the right prompt and find yourself inside this very complicated space. And the ChatGPT will start answering in a very interesting way uh, and uh, respond uh, with the knowledge that has been encoded uh, for this particular topic of your question. Um, yeah. Uh, so I I I finished with the forum. So okay, maybe, maybe we much. we can give a couple of more minutes for the the others to to finish. I think you can follow the the progress of the the, the answers. Uh, but I'd like also to while we're still waiting for the the ten minutes, uh, to to pose a a question that was in the. The questionnaire so what are are your fears and from my perception talking with other colleagues that are not uh, scientists or not teachers is that they think that these uh, ais especially chat gpt which i think is more the the, the most well known 
is that is some kind of oracle that you put some questions and they will give you the final answer. And I think uh, it's a challenge to, to, to since we are talking with teachers, to to tell them how they can effectively use uh, these tools because I think this is inevitable, right? And as educators, we need to prepare the future generations to use these tools in similar ways that when calculators became widely available, probably I was not born at the time, but probably I can imagine math, math teachers saying, oh, this, this will make people dumb because they won't do calculations by hand. And it's not for that, right? It's, it's a tool that will uh, speed up your process and you can dedicate your, your brain power to other things that mach machines cannot do as well as humans. So I think that there's where the challenge we realize today is that we tell the teachers how they can use these fantastic new tools, uh, and but we need to tell them what they are and they're not oracles or not anything else. Like sometimes they have the impression. Okay, I, I think we are uh, just uh, about uh, 10 minutes uh, according to my timekeeping. So I will I will go on and and uh, the talk um and the, the next uh, few slides i will uh, try to give an overview of what is artificial intelligence and and see uh, a few applications of uh, uh, current uh, uh, research paradigm uh so i mean uh, artificial intelligence goes back in the 60s and uh, uh it's about the holy grail how you can have uh, uh, computers to uh, think and learn interact uh, uh, like humans um, and you can uh, imagine that back in many uh, in these days uh, we had uh, you know in science fiction you had characters uh, robotic characters interacting with humans uh, um, but uh, all these years uh, um, uh, technology has been uh, improved, and uh, now we are in, uh, in a very mature states uh, in in which artificial intelligence has uh, um, is able to learn uh, from uh, real world data, digital data. So uh, we are very fortunate that uh, all these nice uh, mathematical computational algorithms. Uh, were in place uh, even back in uh, 90s, 20s, uh, 2000 and uh, 2010. But uh, uh, now we have uh, big data available uh, and all we also have a computational power available to, to ours. Uh, so uh, in artificial intelligence, we one of the sub uh, fields is machine learning and another subfield uh, is uh, deep learning. So um, uh, the deep learning architecture, the machine learning architecture are computational models, but they're not so complex. Uh, they do learn from data, but they reach uh, a, uh, a plateau in, in their performance. Uh, now with deep learning, the difference is that uh, uh, we are able to increase the number of parameters and uh, be able to uh, reach the capacity uh, that is close to the neurons uh, that the human brain uh, has. So uh, somehow, although we uh, there are very uh, all these uh, computational uh, paradigms um, are trying to mimic uh, how uh, human neurons. Uh, interact. Uh, they are not uh, exactly the same, but they are more or less trying to do uh, some uh, uh, same computations. So uh, uh, we uh, this uh, remarkable technology are, is able to analyze this amount of information and uh, give us uh, very uh, good examples and applications on different uh, fields. Um, um, the major fields, just a few of them, uh, are robotics, 
Okay, reasoning and retrieval. You know, in chess playing, how you can uh, reason uh, on on the chessboard and be able to uh, play uh, the machine, uh, being able to play against humans. And uh, we know uh, already for quite many years that the machines has already they have already surpassed the performance of uh, humans. Uh, so I talk a, a few things about machine learning, which are the algorithms. And uh, in our case, we also need natural language processing because we are talking about uh, how uh, computers, uh, machines understand human languages. So uh, um, behind the scenes, uh, the whole field of uh, machine learning that specializes in uh, human language technologies, one big application is natural language processing and, uh, and speech processing. Uh, in uh, robotics, the main thing is the robot, uh, they need to have vision. And when we are saying vision, uh, they they need to understand uh, the, the scene. Um, and, and there is a perception of the scene. So, it's not uh, um, it's a semantic the way uh, the human realizes. Humans are very uh, good in uh, uh, semantic segmentation. Computers are not very good, but they have uh, uh, they have uh, now with deep uh, neural networks, they are able to perform very uh, difficult tasks that go beyond the capacities of humans, not in computer vision. Uh, but in uh, in medicine, uh, and of course for computers for robotics is very uh, um, another very interesting area is how you can uh, navigate. This is pathfinding uh, in uh, a restricted area or outdoors. Uh, for reasoning and retrieval, as I said, uh, uh, how we build algorithms that are able. Uh, to play a chess game uh, against humans and how or how you can uh, find uh, the best fly. So uh, like a recommenders for best flights, for best books, uh, for analyzing uh, uh, for analyzing our data. In machine learning, uh, one of the things, as I said, we have a picture and we need to classify uh, uh, localize and uh, identify uh, different uh, classes of objects, like in uh, object classification example, or in uh, um, in stock markets, uh, how you can uh, exploit historical data in order to predict prices, but not only from uh, um, analyzing past prices, but also uh, predict prices from different uh, cues like uh, social media events that may happen, etc. And a very uh, uh, large application field of machine learning is computer vision, especially in medicine or biomedical uh, engineering, and how you can uh, from image processing and multispectral limits is and uh, able the machine is able to automatically find tumor cells. Uh, in natural language processing, a number of applications that we are familiar with are the translation. So is um, the general translation engines are very uh, good, and you can see how they have improved throughout the years. Uh, the commercial uh, machines like Google Translate. Uh, now we are having, we, we had in the previous year chatbots, the classical chatbots. Now we have the artificial intelligence chatbots that are able, like ChatGPT, to make a dialogue uh, interested with the uh, machine, the, the human and the machine. And example also about, uh, for example, um, you can analyze um, uh, textual data coming from uh, emails and classify uh, automatically uh, uh, into spam categories. So all these uh, antivirus systems, uh, they have integrated in uh, in their uh, variety of tools, um, spam filtering detectors 
that are based on uh, natural language processing. Uh, some real world examples that are already uh, uh, there um, in disease diagnosis, as we said, computer vision, uh, we can have medical images um, from X-rays, from MRIs or fMRIs, functional MRIs, uh, and uh, um, the machine is able to uh, learn from massive data. So you have annotated data that the doctors have uh, uh, annotated and the machine learns from those data and uh, is able to diagnose diseases like uh, pneumonia, fractures, or tumors. Uh, we have virtual assistants uh, like virtual nurses uh, that provide, that give uh, the, uh, you know, medical advice um, in, in common tasks, uh, questions about uh, patients uh, and uh, their medication or their needs. Uh, personalized medicine. Um, uh, actually, it's uh, now with uh, the advent of uh, personal health records. Um, uh, machines are able to analyze this uh, information that uh, relates to individual patients and suggest uh, uh, medical protocols um, that uh, uh, can be uh, personalized uh, for uh, for uh, for these for individuals. Um, in finance, um, you know, um, a big application is about fraud detection. Um, uh, in, in credit cards, when you have several payments, electronic payments that go through uh, the systems, uh, uh, you know, there are several hackers that are trying to, um, uh, to make money. Uh, so, uh, and, and the, on, on, uh, uh, from the side of the banks, there are several uh, uh, AI algorithms behind that try to prevent the, the fraud. So what they do, they analyze uh, um, they analyze data and uh, try to find patterns that, or activities that are uh, outliers and not common uh, transactions. Uh, the robo-advisors uh, are... Uh, you know, uh, platforms that provide uh, advice uh, about the optimization of portfolio management in financial um, accounts of individuals. And credit scoring is how, um, I mean, uh, banks want to adverse the risk. So uh, they provide products to their customers, depending also on the individual's uh, credit worthiness by analyzing uh, the financial history of each one of us. Uh, in transportation, we have seen autonomous vehicles now that uh, self-driving cars that incorporate different sensors, visual sensors, proximity sensors, uh, and they uh, perceive the environment and make decisions as they navigate um, in the wild, in cities or uh, um, in motorways. Uh, traffic prediction, um, uh, I, I mean, you can see that uh, Google has uh, integrated in the Google Maps uh, uh, sometimes, you know, an application say, do you want to exploit the real ta ta traffic data? And uh, it predicts congestion patterns uh, and they try to uh, optimize their routing problem by um, suggesting us the optimal route, taking into account also, uh, traffic data. Uh, and smart transportation systems, you can imagine that uh, with the advent of uh, Internet of Things that uh, have been deployed, uh, uh, every vehicle uh, provides their own uh, signals. You have roads that are becoming smart. Uh, so all, all commuters that are becoming smart uh, provide data. And by the wealth of the this data and the analysis, you can provide uh, uh, smart transportation systems that take into account uh, different categories. Uh, coming now to uh, the education. Uh, AI has a significant uh, potential in education uh, for teachers and uh, for students, especially for teachers, uh, automated uh, administrative tasks that uh, can be automated uh, with uh, the uh, use of AI. 
uh, it can analyze student performance so it can give uh, some initial marks and uh, and uh, make marking uh, uh, more uh, less time consuming or provide some personalized uh, experience uh, for students of course this, the learning paths that can be adapted and uh, and give feedback and support uh, learning with the intelligent tutoring uh, personalized learning uh, uh, the AI uh, systems uh, analyze uh, previous uh, uh, student performance data um, um, and they uh, they can uh, 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 provide uh, learning paths uh, uh, with uh, targeted uh, resources uh, exercises quizzes and um, and, uh, and that are uh, comp uh, based on uh, uh, the uh, strengths and the weaknesses of, of the students. And virtual tutors, uh, who, which are able uh, to answer questions like the ones that we will see with ChatGPT, explain concepts and offer um, personalized guidance. So intelligent tutoring systems, um, they, they are already there uh, more than uh, 15 years. Uh, the first uh, systems um, and they uh, the the they do provide uh, you know understand they try to understand uh, students uh, uh, input and provide adapt uh, adapt the instruction accordingly to the students uh, needs uh, and provide explanations and assist the student uh, where uh, they they need help um uh, the automated grading and uh, feedback, uh, as I said before, uh, an example of automated uh, grading is on short answering, short answers, uh, free text answers that uh, uh, the students uh, are, uh, you know, uh, they can uh, answer and the machine uh, is able to understand and uh, produce automated scoring. And um, Another field is uh, essay scoring, uh, which are, um, say you can predefine the criteria of uh, the marking of the grading and um, uh, that can range from grammar, coherence of text, et cetera. And uh, um, uh, the machine is able to uh, provide uh, uh, automatic uh, grading. Of course, the teacher, uh, will be able to uh, make uh, uh, corrections and also at the same time since uh, the marks of the, the teacher the AI system is able to adapt to the, mar the marking preferences of the teacher. Uh, of course it can provide uh, feedback in uh, quizzes or assessments and um, that will aim to uh, understand uh, students' mistakes and improve their performance. In language learning, uh, we have uh, speech recognition and uh, language processing and natural language processing techniques. Uh, with speech recognition, we convert text to speech, but also able to analyze the pronunciation patterns and uh, uh, or uh, provide uh, feedback uh, related to uh, the speaking skills of uh, students and presentation skills, for example. Um, at the same time, AI, NLP can analyze text and uh, uh, with respect to vocabulary, grammar corrections and or other cost contextual uh, explanations. Um, of course, we have a special group in in education. Uh, we have special needs education, uh, and how the um, uh, technology can support uh, students with special needs. Um, with uh, so students with visual impairments um, can get access uh to um educational content uh, through text to speech capabilities or uh by converting uh, handwriting uh, notes into digital text and and then uh you can uh, uh link that to text to speech also 
uh, for students, uh, 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 they they can um, they, they can customize. You know, if you have students with difficulties in um, in their learning, um, uh, some learning disability, uh, you can have the AI system uh, to provide uh, a tailored uh, uh, instructions and uh, material. Uh, that are um, uh, appropriate for uh, uh, their needs and uh, provide customized uh, uh, learning ex experiences. Um, so, one of the uh, uh, main aspects, because we are talking about technology, and uh, artificial intelligence, as we said, artificial intelligence is based on uh, uh the deep learning at least in in uh, uh, uh nowadays um uh, is based on the paradigm of deep learning uh so um the data uh, there are several implications you know ethical implications related to uh the use of the uh, ai system and uh, the data on which uh, the AI system has been deployed. Um, in uh, so, uh, I would like uh, algorithms, the AI system at the end, to provide uh, unbiased um, outcomes uh, in their decision and uh, um, and be transparent, fair, and inclusive. So transparency. Uh, has to do with how you can can you explain the decision that an AI system, uh, an AI algorithm uh, makes? Okay, we have developed, you know, we say um, in an automatic grading system. Okay, can you justify the grade uh, that the AI system produced? So instead of providing the, uh, not only provide one number say one mark but the uh, they need to be able to uh, analyze why they they made uh, this marking uh, and this is uh, very important in order to understand um you know uh, how the uh, to to gain you know trust on the ai system and not take for granted uh, their decision. Uh, there are issues related to data privacy and security. Um, we know we know that uh, uh, data that, uh, um, uh, of course, this this uh, this is a very technical thing. Um, and all uh, you know, all the pri the privacy data. Um, somehow there are techniques that uh, big companies or uh, universities uh, they can discard, you know, personal information uh, from large uh, corpus for that are used for training. Uh, but uh, during the de the deployment of AI systems, you collect also data from uh, users. Uh, so there are also uh, issues related to security. How secure are those data, and uh, and uh, if uh, they can affect uh, uh, the uh, because if you go in continuous uh, learning uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, even you know some. Uh, 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 they, they they can harm you know the performance of the AI system intentional, or they can uh, use uh, data of other users. So how you deal with this? Uh, there are several, uh, you know, uh, research uh, questions and uh, technologies that are, uh, you know, and, and techniques uh, they are, that they are trying to address uh, the data privacy. Uh, especially with the advent of uh, IoT, we have smart watches that collect data from uh, from our uh, 
uh, from different sensors and they provide this data, for example, uh, in their cloud. And this data uh, can be input, for example, um, to insurance companies uh, or for some uh, health uh, uh, some uh, health applications. Uh, um, so there, there is a lot of work under data privacy and security and how we can protect uh, humans from disclosing this kind of information. At the same time, we need to uh, provide, to be able to get uh, in, uh, data from uh, users, but in a way that we respect all this uh, privacy, security, and protection. Um, uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, this um, uh, we have to deal with uh, uh, the principles of uh, responsible artificial intelligence uh, usage, and because um, AI can be deployed in a way that um, uh, can be, uh, you know, uh, um, for good or for bad. So um, uh, there are different, uh, you know, applications. Uh, which uh, uh, can be used, uh, for example, now that are you know in uh, in social media for producing fake news, for example. Um, there is a, a big debate on how you deal with uh, this kind of uh, uh, AI usage and if it is. Uh, um, and at the, uh, at the same time, there are uh, other, uh, you know, uh, systems that are trying to detect misinformation. So uh, the AI explosion, you, you can see machines that are able to generate data and machines that are trying to uh, detect uh, whether content is uh, machine generating or human generated. So, uh, talking about generative um, content, uh, and we are uh, now in the era of uh, uh, GPT. Um, GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformers. So, uh, the transformer is a, a particular uh, neural network architecture. Um, and which is a, a deep neural network with deep, many, many parameters, billion of parameters. Uh, Pre-trained, it means that, okay, you have given enough data, uh, say, or the whole web, your uh, authority um, textual resources, like encyclopedias, um, or um, um, exams, uh, content from um, uh, different uh, topics and disciplines, and all these, even even code, uh, computer code, and uh, with this um, uh, generally pre-trained transformer, uh, the machine, what it does, it does a very simple thing. It tries if you give me a number of words. I can predict what will be the next word. So it is, it generates text. So that's why it is a generative uh, machine. And the, the, the architecture of machine is a transformer. And this is pre-trained on big data. And training those machines are very expensive, uh, both in terms of uh, human power that you have uh, in, in terms of uh, people that worked on algorithms of data collection, data clearing, uh, facilitating uh, all these uh, uh, processes, but also in terms of computational power um, that is uh, uh, you can in, you have to invest in in big uh, uh, compu computers. Uh, G GPUs with uh, different GPUs and memories, but at the same time, you have to consume um, electric power. So the paradigm here is not uh, very green. It's not very environmentally friendly. 
So once you uh, produce a training, a, a pre-trained transformer, it's very um, it's very common to uh, allow people to have access to these pre-trained uh, models. Uh, that's why we say pre-trained transformers and uh, ChatGPT is a an instructional a conversational um, language model that is based on generative pre-trained transformers. Um, so I, I covered this one. As I said, the pre-trained corpus uh, uh, is a large corpus of textual data. Um, uh, and of course, we need to have high quality. We have to need coherent uh, text. And um, uh, in in chat GPT, uh, because you have uh, two things, GPT and the chat behind that. So you need somehow to be able to, the machine to be able to understand also uh, questions. So, but the machine can produce also questions. So this particular um, uh, neural network is able not only to produce answers, but is able to produce questions as well. Um, so this is a very good paradigm uh, because it has changed the way we have uh, until now we have uh, um, we deal deal with um, uh, natural language applications. So instead of having a questioning answering system, one system that uh, answers specific questions, uh, we have systems that answer questions. At the same time, they can translate text. Uh, at the same time, they can correct text. At the same time, they can summarize text. At the same time, so all the tasks, they, 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 they can be accomplished by uh, the same uh, architecture. Uh, so uh, translation, summarization, uh, questioning, answering, and of course, interaction uh, between human and computer. And in the interaction, uh, you can understand that it's very important, the context to be able to computers to understand uh, context and uh, uh, references that uh, uh, we make with uh, in human language um, by referring to entities, uh, named entities uh, with pronouns uh, um, and not with uh, names. And uh, from the history of the chat, um, the uh, AI system uh, is able uh, to relate pronouns with the right uh, name entity. Um, so in particular, ChatGPT, uh, it is an artificial language model that is developed by OpenAI company. The OpenAI initiative has started, the uh, company has uh, started, um, you know, uh, a few years ago. And there's um, some big investors uh, throughout the years that have uh, invested a, a, a huge amount of money, uh, but um, they produced all the time um, very uh, good examples. And they, especially the generative uh, uh, pre-trained transformers, they are able to uh, generate uh, texts of human-like quality, and uh, 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 and th that text is uh, is a response to input uh, prompts uh, or uh, inputs uh, that uh, the user gives. Um, uh, it has been trained on different number of topics, as I said. Uh, the last versions uh, and has been updated, uh, you know, uh, there are different versions. Um, the last ones are able also to uh, produce, to understand uh, not only text, but uh, also um, 
other modalities like uh, visual data, like images. So uh, what are the applications of ChatGPT in education? Well, in education, we have um, ChatGPT can support teachers and it can support students um, uh, in a number of ways, especially for generating uh, interactive uh, experiences and providing personalized assistance. Um, it can provide instant access answers to our questions. It can provide explanations. We can ask them explanation, equation, for, uh, equation that uh, requires explanation of a specific topic. It can provide clarifications on the questions that we pose. Uh, it can generate, at the same time, it can generate quizzes. As I said, it can generate those equations. So it can generate quizzes and not only quizzes, just the questions, but a multiple choice, for example, quizzes. It can produce, it can generate interactive stories. Um, and it can engage, in general, students in uh, active learning experiences. Um, so students can ask GPT questions, receive personalized uh, learning support. Uh, the last one, the personalized learning support, is not supported by ChatGPT as it is right now. But there are some um, already in place. Um, uh, a few industrial attempts, uh, like uh, the Cannes Academy or the uh, O'Reilly uh, uh, publications, that they they are trying to uh, incorporate ChatGPT uh, on the wealth of um, of of authoritative content that they have, in order to provide personalized learning support to their customers students or uh, or customers that are buying books, for example, for O'Reilly publications. Um, so an example, uh, we can have students studying history uh, and they can ask ChatGPT about uh, specific uh, historical figures, detailed explanations, etc., cetera, uh, provide resources. It's like uh, uh, asking, you know, uh, querying, uh, you know, Google, and and having you know the corresponding links and then you have to extract the information put it but uh, with such a bt um you can get you know coherent text about questions of course you have to bear in mind that that such a bt has been trained on data that um, uh, it was um up to 2021 so uh, recent data, like, uh, I mean, because I mentioned the example of uh, Google um, search, um, they don't provide Google search, but has been integrated uh, in search engines. So there is another example of integrated uh, uh, ChatGPT in search engines. And uh, in, uh, in a few years from now, it will change, you know, the, uh, the whole landscape of uh, search engines. Uh, by adapting um, and providing personalized um, uh, generated text from to our questions. Um, in language practice and feedback, uh, we it's uh, we can think that ChatGPT can assist us in language learning um, through conversation and practice uh, our language skills. Um, for example, uh, a student um, that um, learns a foreign language, uh, it can interact with ChatGPT uh, and get uh, uh, feedback on uh, the grammar, the vocabulary, or the pronunciation. Um, it supports the research and information retrieval um, with reliable up-to-date information on various subjects. As I said, up-to-date, it means uh, uh, a year ago. 
uh, when the last uh, uh, person was uh, 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 the data set that was trained on. But there are more uh, versions that are, are coming out, uh, which are more up to date. Um, it can produce, um, it can assist students on, on projects, on uh, uh, projects that, uh, and tasks that pr provide, you know, they require, they, uh, require uh, resources, uh, uh, search in the, in the sources, summaries, explanations um, uh, for, for, uh, for a, a research project. Um, so a few examples on how ChatGPT can be uh, used in uh, uh, teaching and learning. And this is uh, from uh, the UNESCO uh, report on that was uh, this year uh, UNESCO report on ChatGPT and artificial intelligence in higher education quick start guide uh, and you can see that there are many many possibilities uh, different role as a uh, search engine so uh, as an engine a possibility engine so it, it generates alternatives uh, of ideas. Uh, as a Socratic op opponent, it can act as a, an opponent uh, to develop an argument. Uh, as a collaboration coach, uh, it, can, it can help groups uh, of, of students to research and solve collaborative uh, problems together. Uh, it can guide uh, on the side. It, you have a guidance on, on the side. Um, it, it, it can be a personal tutor. Uh, it can be a goal designer, um, so it can assist you through uh, the design pro uh, process. Uh, it can provide uh, uh, tools uh, that explore interpret, so exploration. Uh, it can be a study body, like in our case, that we like to uh, help students to reflect on learning material. It can be a motivator and offer game challenges uh, to students that extend their learning. Uh, it can be an assessor, a dynamic assessor, um, uh, that uh, uh, keeps a profile of each student's uh, uh, knowledge. So all these different have been encoded, different possibilities have been encoded in this uh, uh, report of uh, UNESCO. Um, as I said, there are quite a few ethical use uh, limitations and uses. So um, hate speech has been detected from ChatGPT and uh, and the machine responds ethically and responsibly. Um, uh, teachers uh, at the same time uh should ex encourage critical thinking uh when uh they deploy uh, ai tools like uh, chat gpt and of course that gpt has limitations like um, hallucination is a very common um thing that uh, especially with uh, uh when um uh, data uh, when uh, data was not enough were not enough for training uh, it, it just uh, generates uh, things that are, uh, you know, not real. So very important uh, not to be, to trust what you, you see uh, from uh, such a BT. Uh, it can be integrated in teaching practices as a supplementary tool uh, to enhance uh, activities in classroom. For example, in uh, group discussions uh, where a teacher can provide additional perspectives and uh, relevant information with the use of ChatGPT. So you can use ChatGPT uh, in group discussions for pros and cons, uh, or can be used to create interactive online lessons and provide feedback on student assignments. Uh, so benefits and limitations um uh, benefits we start with benefits the pluses are the benefits so we encode it in this transparency uh, how we see the benefits of ChatGPT uh, for personalized learning support to students 
uh, for uh, providing a means uh, to access information uh, on a wide range of topics um, and provide uh, in some case, in most cases, uh, reliable information. Um, it can be uh, engaged and interactive in a, in a way uh, that provides, you know, uh, quizzes, you can generate interactive stories uh, as a generative uh, uh, machine um, can provide, you know, uh, input uh, to students. And of course, it can serve as a, a supplementary tool uh, for teachers for um, uh, to generate ideas for classroom activities or uh, perspective or professional development, etc. On the negative sides, um, ChatGPT may exhibit uh, biases all the time. You know that are you know biases are present in training data. So there is a work how you can um, reduce the biases or uh, minimize the biases, uh, but they are still there. Um, uh, so sometimes it may not provide comprehensive, accurate responses. So it lacks human expertise. And when we say human expertise, we are the experts of a domain, not the general human. Uh, there are a few issues, considerations, ethical considerations uh, that res relate to privacy concerns and also the usage, how we respond, the responsible uh, use of AI. Um, um, sometimes may struggle to understand the context of the question. Uh, that are lit that are not you know uh, very uh, uh, accurate, so it can affect uh, the prompts, uh, the equations that we pose affect the quality and the accuracy of the responses of ChatGPT. So it's very important uh, to train ourselves on the way that uh, we able to uh, uh, you know challenge the ChatGPT, and the risk uh, also on over-reliance on ChatGPT, and uh, this one can hinder you know, critical thinking and not, be, and not write your own text. When it's safe to use uh, ChatGPT, so in this transparency, uh, uh, you have to answer first the question, does it matter if the output is true? Uh, if it doesn't matter, uh, then it's safe to use ChatGPT. If it does matter, then you have to ask another question. Do you have the expertise? Because it, it will provide you some. Do you have the expertise to verify that the output is, is accurate? If you don't have the expertise to, to, to say, OK, the, the, to verify that the outcome of the uh, ChatGPT is accurate, then it's not safe to use ChatGPT. But if you are able to uh, uh, verify uh, the output, the accuracy of the output, then you have to answer another question. Are you able or are you willing to take responsibility for misused inaccuracies? Which means someone has to take the responsibility. Okay, uh, legal, could be legal implications or moral implications. If, if that the answer is also yes, then okay. Possibly uh, you, you are sure, you are more almost certain to use the ChatGPT. If one of the questions is no, then don't, don't use ChatGPT. So, uh, so a few resources about uh, the first two are the European Commission and the last one is from uh, UNESCO. And I will uh, pass on, you know, uh, to Pepe uh, and that will give us uh, uh, some uh, hands-on experience with uh, ChatGPT. So I will stop sharing my screen and Pepe will start sharing her screen. Uh, at first, uh, maybe uh, uh, to, uh, we have to ask if there are any questions so far from uh, the people watching. Yes, thank you, Pepe. Uh, no, 
no, there's no questions from the YouTube uh, chat. Okay. Uh, so I'm sharing my screen. Um, uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, so we can see your screen. Thank you. Um, so at uh, this point, uh, uh, I think we're ready to um, have a look at uh, in real time of uh, what about uh, of what uh, uh, ChatGPT can offer us from the educational perspective. I have some um, hidden slides uh, about uh, how to uh, first make an account to ChatGPT uh, and um, uh, some. Um, uh, instructions. Uh, uh, we're not uh, going to see them now, uh, but they will be available in the slides. Uh, just some things to keep in mind that um, in order to have uh, uh, more uh, relevant results, we have to provide more specific information about how we want it to respond. Uh, so we can limit the response, refine uh, our uh, prompt uh, and uh, uh, um, ask uh, ChatGPT to restrict its response in terms of length. Uh, for example, uh, tell me how an electrical cir circuit works in 50 words, or write a four paragraph essay, uh, or uh, we can uh, also modify the style of the, uh, the response, uh, asking it to explain uh, a concept uh, uh, like uh, I am uh, 10 years old uh, or uh, a professional or um, a knowledgeable adult. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that ChatGPT remembers what users had said earlier in the conversation, uh, which allows uh, users to provide follow-up questions or follow-up corrections uh, in uh, the uh, ChatGPT's responses. So uh, let's start uh, with uh, some uh, uh, use cases that uh, you might face or your students might, might face uh, during the uh, educational practice. Uh, one thing to uh, ask is uh, to explain terms and provide examples. So uh, I'm asking what is electrical induction and um, I want it to be explained to me as if I am a 10 years old student. Um, so we can see uh, it modifies uh, the style of uh, language, the vocabulary, the examples, in order to make it uh, more engaging and more un understandable uh, to a five uh, to a ten years old uh, student. Uh, on the left, of course, we have the chat history, which can be uh, deleted or renamed. Uh, I can regenerate the response uh, and uh, I can compare the two generated texts uh, and keep the one that I want. I'm coming back to the uh, prompts I might give. So uh, this time I want uh, electrical indu induction to be explained as if I am a 10, 18 years old university student. Uh, so um, uh, in this case, uh, the vocabulary is more technical. Uh, there, is, um, there are specific uh, uh, scientific terms, uh, examples, uh, which are more uh, relevant uh, for an 18 years old university student. Uh, now from a humanities subject, I want to ask um, 
the literary term foreshadowing. Um, either as a, a young student or as a professional uh, English teacher uh, or a literature, a literature teacher. Um, so we have a complete um, introduction to the term of foreshadowing, as you may see, with an introduction. Uh, it's uh, use, uh, some examples. Um, um, where uh, do we find it and what is its effect? And um, a conclusion. This is the um, standard um, response of AI in this kind of question, which uh, has the structure of a small uh, essay, let's say. Um, of course, I can ask to, to it to provide uh, real examples of uh, this um, technique, the foreshadowing technique from classic literature. Uh, so I get as many examples as I want. Um, I can restrict the number of examples or ask for more than these that I am getting. We have uh, several literary and classic literary texts. Uh, and I want some more examples from ancient Greek tragedies. Which are uh, rich in this uh, technique of foreshadowing. So we have uh, a number of uh, tragedies, Oedipus Rex, Antigone, and so on. Uh, and an example from the arts field, uh, where I can ask it to explain a concept, the concept of impressionism. Uh, again, uh, I will get a comprehensive um, uh, description and explanation of the term. Uh, uh, with uh, the main representatives, the main characteristics. Um, I, uh, I don't think it's able to generate it. Ah, okay, it started. It locates it in time and uh, in, uh, in space uh, where it was uh, born, uh, which are uh, the, uh, the main uh, who are the, the main representatives, and I can ask to this, ask it to describe the term impressionism to me as if it is an impressionist painter uh, such as Monet. So it um, adopts uh, another uh, style, a completely different role. Ah, oh, my dear friend, let me paint you a picture of Impressionism. Imagine standing by a tranquil pond, etc., etc. So this is a very engaging way to introduce uh, students to uh, um, these kind of uh, concepts. Um, in uh, fields like uh, arts and uh, humanities. Um, another use case is uh, generating comprehension questions about a topic. Um, there are uh, several uh, add-ons uh, into ChatGPT. Uh, one of them uh, is um, uh, the uh, chat with PDF, I, uh, I, I guess. Um, where you provide the link to a PDF document, and then you can uh, ask uh, questions about this uh, specific text. Uh, at this point, uh, we are just um, going to use uh, an existing uh, document. 
PDF document um, about the digestive system. So uh, you can copy uh, the, the whole text, paste it in the typing box, and uh, ask, can you generate comprehension questions for secondary school students based on the text I'm copying about the digestive system? Um, Uh, the um, uh, text is quite lengthy, uh, however, however, it is uh, easily processed and um, uh, the chat GPT is able to provide 12 uh, uh, comprehension questions, open-ended questions about this specific text that uh, I uh, uh, gave as an input. Uh, from this text, I can ask for key terms to be extracted and I can restrict the number of the key terms I want. Uh, so uh, there are some, uh, a number of um, uh, 29 uh, key terms extracted from the uh, text. Um, I can ask it to uh, uh, provide key terms uh, specifically related to the organs of the digestive system. Uh, so uh, the list now will be restricted to, uh, to those. Um, and uh, ask it to pick the most, the five most important ones uh, in case I uh, need it for uh, um, a test I have to prepare or for uh, another task. And it justifies um, why uh, it selected these specific uh, key terms. Um, as Vasilis mentioned, um, uh, we can use uh, uh, ChatGPT to generate quizzes, uh, which are very important uh, for teachers. Uh, not only in terms of the um, everyday homework, but uh, in uh, uh, the context of um, personalized learning. Um, so uh, it is very important to uh, have this uh, functionality uh, in place to address different students' needs. So uh, I can ask you to generate a multiple choice question quiz based on this specific text. And uh, at the end of the quiz, it will provide the answers. Um, I can generate a closed test, a text uh, uh, with uh, gaps, and uh, I can ask it to um, I need it to be no more than uh, one paragraph. And um, it gives me the, the text with the gaps to be filled and the answer key. Uh, uh, true false questions based on the text. Matching quizzes, which can be used uh, in uh, worksheets. Um, and uh, in the meanwhile, 
uh, we can uh, also uh, ask it to generate critical thinking questions on a certain topic or uh, on the basis of the text I provided. Uh, so uh, uh, I assess um, a deeper understanding of uh, a topic that uh, uh, I uh, pee, I taught, or I am about to teach. Um, it uh, still generates the matching question that I asked it for. And now two critical thinking questions uh, based on the text about the digestive system. Um, uh, uh, each time um, you can ask it to regenerate the response. So you can uh, take uh, several alternatives of um, uh, uh, the prompt that you ask about and uh, uh, you can rate the response, uh, and of course, you can review uh, all uh, alternatives of the same prompt and uh, select the one uh, you think is more uh, relevant to your needs. Um, it can create lesson plans. Um, and uh, works it uh, as we uh, saw. Um, so I am going to ask it to create a lesson plan about the digestive system. Uh, and uh, I specify the uh, grade, uh, the school grade and the educational level. Um, it's uh, better uh, um, from uh, the testing I've been doing to uh, indicate also the age of uh, children and also not also their school grade. Uh, it gives uh, the uh, lesson plan objectives, the materials, the duration, uh, the tasks and uh, the corresponding uh, time it will take to perform them. Uh, suggestions for uh, hands-on activities, uh, group discussions, um, and um, some optional extension activities, uh, uh, and also um, suggestions about uh, how you can assess um, the outcomes of uh, this lesson. Uh, as a supplementary material, I can ask for a worksheet related to the uh, lesson plan that I inquired for. So I need the worksheet related to the digestive system with five tasks. Uh, so it provides matching questions. Um, true or false questions, multiple choice questions, um, fill in the blanks, and so on. Um, unless uh, it is uh, already covered, uh, I can uh, use ChatGPT um, to suggest uh, creative project ideas related to the digestive system. So I can um, uh, ensure a deeper understanding and critical thinking of the topic. Um, so there are uh, some suggestions such as uh, comic strips, interactive board games, uh, um, role playing, infographic or poster or a group project for a science fair and so on. And uh, also it ends with um, suggestions of how to use uh, its own suggestions. Um, I can use uh, ChatGPT also for assessment purposes. Uh, uh, for example, 
uh, I can provide the answer of, uh, uh, of the, for example, a short answer of my student um, to uh, a question uh, about, uh, let's say, the definition of a metaphor. And uh, I uh, want to, uh, I wanted to rate it um, and uh, justify its score. So uh, I asked one of my students in the second grade of secondary school, gave me the following definition of metaphor. Uh, metaphor is when we say a word with a different meaning than we normally use it. Uh, the question gets two grades. How do you suggest I score it? And please justify your score. Uh, it begins with an introduction that um, scoring can be subje uh, subje subjective. Uh, it uh, um, uses uh, some criteria, accuracy and completeness and uh, recommends that we award one grade out of two for this specific definition. Uh, if I wanted to consider, for, uh, let's say, some uh, more uh, criteria, such as uh, vocabulary and grammar, uh, 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 we can ask it again to uh, reassess Uh, okay, in this case, um, I made the, uh, it, um, uh, I confused it and um, uh, it is as if I'm giving a special emphasis on this uh, aspect. Uh, so um, in case uh, I ask for uh, rating it in terms of vocabulary and grammar, uh, now it suggests awarding two grades out of two for the linguistic aspect of the response. Uh, however, um, I can uh, ask um, uh, use all the above criteria to rate the definition. I remind that it is, he is a 15 years old student. So now we have accuracy, we have completeness, and we have uh, vocabulary, uh, and we have grammar, and it gives two grades out of four. Um, I can also um, ask you to provide a good definition of the term metaphor to get the two points. Um, but let's move on to uh, another use case, which is uh, essay writing, uh, where I can use it to explore a topic and uh, search for arguments for and against an opinion. Uh, so at first, um, um, let's say that I have to uh, explore uh, together my, with my students the topic uh, European Union. Uh, so I need at first some informational material uh, for my third grade secondary school students in order to be prepared for essay writing. So uh, in this case, it acts like a search engine, uh, giving us uh, up-to-date information about uh, the European Union, purpose and goals, currency, institutions, uh, benefits, and so on. Uh, so it already gives an outline for an essay uh, about the European Union. But uh, let's say that we need arguments for and against joining the European Union. So 
uh, we ask for uh, arguments, uh, which are very important for essay writing. Uh, we have um, positive and negative arguments against joining the European Union. So uh, this is extremely helpful uh, for the teacher in order to prepare it, uh, his students or um, for students to better be prepared for essay writing. Um, and uh, I can search for, for uh, specific um, uh, arguments to justify an opinion uh, such as the opinion that EU supports countries' social and economic growth. Uh, all these are uh, very helpful material for both students and teachers. Uh, elimination of trade barriers, investment and funding opportunities, cohesion policy, and all these are uh, up to date and easy accessible. Um, some limitations that we have to uh, keep in mind. Um, uh, as uh, also mentioned by Vasilis, uh, there are uh, several locations that ChatGPT um, uh, produces false statements. Uh, I already know, for example, that the historian Polybius uh, is uh, mentioning uh, the Greek uh, tribe uh, the Arcadians and their relationships uh, with, uh, relationship with music. Uh, I ask this question, um, but I get a, a false response um, from ChatGPT saying that Polybius does not specifically discuss the Arcadians' relationship with music. Uh, so I have to um, use my uh, knowledge and my expertise uh, to verify the output of the response. Uh, another example of uh, lack of context, uh, there are um, uh, several Greek people who refer to Alexander the Great as King Alexander. Uh, now, two days ago, when I asked this question, um, ChatGPT did not have the contextual knowledge to correctly respond to my question and uh, uh, responded to me that there is no such uh, an historical figure named King Alexander. But two days uh, after that, uh, now it is able to overcome this uh, context that maybe I provided and uh, can accurately respond to this question. But uh, if I ask about where is Macedonia without giving any other context, um, it's going to um, uh, respond about the historical region of the Southeastern Europe, uh, which encompasses several uh, modern countries such as Greece, Northern Macedonia, but uh, I am Greek and I need to hear about the Greece, Macedon Macedonia, the, the, part, the region of Greece that uh, is uh, named um, Macedonia, and it's not uh, able to give me the answer that I want because it doesn't have the contextual knowledge to provide this uh, answer. Also, if I uh, ask about um, uh, locations that are not so well known, uh, the um, answer will be inaccurate, will contain, contain inaccuracies. Um, so uh, I uh, have to verify it and not take it for granted. And uh, another thing we have to, take, to keep in mind is that our prompts uh, need to be as specific as possible in order to get a specific and accurate and useful answers. So uh, the question, tell me about a significant historical event 
uh, even if I have a specific uh, historical period, period in mind, uh, will be useless for me if I don't provide more context. Um, so uh, that's all about uh, the ChatGPT itself. Um, uh, we are uh, have integrated uh, ChatGPT version uh, 3.5 to um, our own convers conversational uh, AI uh, system, which uh, we are developing in uh, terms of the AI for a do project. And um, I'm going to show it to you. Um, um, this is the uh, page where we are creating an account. Uh, we, uh, all you need is a username and the password. Uh, the email is uh, optional and uh, you can put uh, any email you want. It can be a fake one. Um, you choose your role as a student or as a teacher. Uh, you uh, read uh, and uh, uh, consent to the terms and conditions and um, uh, privacy statement. And then you are ready to use the application. Um, here I logged in as a student. So uh, you type any one uh, of uh, um, the questions we mentioned or any other, such as, um, uh, is it going to rain tomorrow? But this is not an educational one. And uh, it adopts um, an educational style, a teaching, role, a tutor role, and uh, um, informs me that I am a teaching assistant. My area of expertise is helping students with their academic questions rather than weather predictions, and uh, invites me to um, provide any educational queries and uh, chat with it about them. Um, so, uh, you are welcome to um, use this uh, application um, and um, think about uh, all the tasks you have to perform as part of your teaching duties and ask relevant questions to it, um, such as um, um, give uh, some indicative students' answers to a given question of uh, varying degrees of accuracy and uh, ask the assistant to rate them and then compare your own uh, score to the system's score um, and um, draw a conclusion about uh, the system's um, uh, ability to uh, evaluate students' responses uh, as a human. Um, also, other tasks that you can um, um, try is uh, give an expert from a textbook and ask it to generate questions of different types, such as the ones we saw before. Um, search for information uh, about a topic that you're going to teach. Um, ask it to create a lesson plan or uh, ask it to create the outline of a PowerPoint presentation that you need to prepare for a lesson or for a lecture or for any other use uh, and uh, add the content to the slides. Uh, explain a concept adopting different style uh, 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 such as a knowledgeable adult or a child or a scientist and, and so on. Ask for clarifying examples. And um, a very interesting um, test you can uh, do is ask the same question about the subject in different languages. Um, 
uh, we uh, tested uh, it in Greek and um, uh, in the occasion of some uh, questions about uh, some uh, battles of the Greek his history uh, which are not so well known, uh, we got uh, some very inaccurate results in uh, Greek, but uh, the English results were much more accurate and uh, useful. So before you start uh, using it, uh, uh, make uh, uh, pose this question to yourself, what are the things I need to um, uh, the system to help me uh, as part of my teaching duties and uh, get any help you can from it. Uh, after that, you are invited to uh, fill in a questionnaire uh, so we get uh, uh, feedback uh, about your experience, but most importantly, about your inquire, um, requirements and needs are as end users of such a conversational AI application. We can Thank take you. Uh, questions, I think. Thank you very much. I think there are no questions, at least not uh, in the in the YouTube channel. Can you please uh, post uh, the um, the URLs, the links. the links of uh, they're the all there. They're, they're all, all there. there. Oh, thank you yeah, very much. Yeah, they're all there. Uh, yeah, I just uh, have uh, one question. I know you, you you kind of touch it in in, in multiple uh, different uh, ways. But uh, I think uh, it's important for teachers to understand they usually they are very scared. Like, okay, so are people replacing us with uh, artificial intelligence? Will teacher profession die? And we keep insisting that's not the case at all because you are also presented uh, several reasons why a teacher is more important than ever. But uh, if we gave you an elev elevator pitch for a teacher, why artificial intelligence will not take over their place? What would you say? Pepe, you want to answer this one? Um, uh, yes, I think uh, it's um, obvious from the examples we saw that uh, this is a tool uh, uh, which can upscale um, teachers' um, abilities, skills, um, uh, uh, reduce time from uh, ma manual time, uh, but uh, it uh, cannot work without uh, an, um, a teacher uh, uh, who uh, is able to verify its uh, output uh, without uh, this step of verification, all of these are useless. Um, and um, without uh, um, the, it's, uh, the teacher's contribution to um, adapt it to uh, its uh, uh, end users who are the, the, the students. Uh, so uh, I, I, I guess uh, teacher is at the center of this uh, experience, AI experience. At, at the same time, you, you can think of, say, uh, students that uh, can use this AI system by themselves, fine, uh, say for producing uh, responses to projects that uh, assignments mm -hmm. uh, of their teachers. So uh, we are talking about responsible AI. Uh, AI. Responsible AI is how we use it in a responsible way. So if we are going to cheat, for example, and we are using AI system to cheat and, uh, and not do our critical thinking, uh, the the idea is to uh, facilitate critical thinking and not to eliminate critical thinking. So uh, I think uh, 
teacher's role in this particular uh, aspect is very important on the actual uh, use of the AI system within the educational practice. So it's, we're going to one step higher in the educational scenario. Now, you know, chat GPT is there. Students can go there and ask the questions so the teachers can, you know, already go one step further and say, okay, from now then, you start there in chat, and how do you move forward? Yeah, that is very interesting. There is a question, oh, from Nico Zigoritsas uh, is asking, how is the role of the teacher changing? That's, I think that's what you're, we are discussing, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, I mean, um, okay. Uh, uh, the, the role of the teacher is, um, uh, if we're talking about classrooms, I mean, it's still there. Uh, so in, in terms of, of content, you saw the, uh, the example that uh, you can uh, use this AI system to exploit your own content and have the AI uh, system to provide you, uh, you know, um, questions, uh, lesson uh, plans based on your own content. This is the, the idea is to adapt, not to have a generic AI system, but to guide the AI system uh, using your own uh, content. And uh, I think this is very important uh, aspect of uh, how you can train teachers, educators, um, schools to exploit the content they, they are producing themselves, the educational content. Um, and and I think that uh, you you have several levels of uh, uh, students, uh, teachers, school environment, and um, also uh, parents, families. Uh, they play an important role on how the the, the students will be using uh, technology uh, at home. And, and and of course, we are talking about the whole educational system, how it will reform somehow and adopt and adapt, adopt and adapt at the same time policies uh, that are in place and uh, will enhance um, uh, teachers' uh, work. Well, I guess um, we need to finish. We extended one hour over the time that uh, we were supposed to be here with the teachers. Nonetheless, were very interesting. And I think the uh, examples that you presented were very complete and very useful to give an idea of the power of uh, AI, but also on the on the importance of the, the critical eye of the, the teacher and uh, what's ahead. I mean, we can only imagine, and I, I, I tend to think positively about it. But uh, well, from my side, I would like to thank you very much for this uh, for this presentation. And I thank know you. Nikos uh, that uh, will then uh, close and guide us to, to the thank next. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you, Nikos. Uh, yes, it was a uh, uh, really uh, a pleasure. To, to attend this webinar. Uh, I think it was um, uh, eye-opening. Uh, I'm still a little bit afraid of the whole concept of AI and uh, how we can use it, uh, uh, not in general, but um, myself, I'm not uh, ready to do that. Uh, any case, uh, again, I cannot express my, uh, my enough gratitude for Dr. Katsouros and Dr. Stamouli for being with us today. And again, thank you for that. Uh, we will see you again next week with another uh, a very interesting uh, webinar uh, from the series of the LFE webinars uh, about uh, uh, how uh, we can uh, go through key emotional challenges in distance learning education. Uh, uh, 
my uh, thanks to everyone that uh, was uh, with uh, us to today and as always to my great team uh, Gustavo and Rosa uh, thank you all see you next time thank you all thank you all we thank are closing the session bye 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 Gustavo